Hello everybody, McFluffy Stuff here, and today I would like to bring to you an updated Is It's Drake list. I already hear the boos, I hear the sighing, I know, War of the Spark just came out, you want something new, you want something spicy, you want something juicy, and I'm bringing to you an older deck. I am. But I will say, thanks to a few cards from War of the Spark, I feel like this deck got better. So leave a like if you liked the deck we're about to bring to you. Subscribe to the channel for more MTG content. And subscribe to the channel so you get notified every time we drop some spicy MTG deck lists. With all that boring stuff out of the way, we're going to touch on the deck here. I will start off by saying what we're going to do is we're going to look at the main board, we're going to look at the sideboard, and then we'll hit you up with some info. So we got 4 Opt, 4 Shock, 2 Thud, 4 Augur of Bolas, 4 Charticors, 4 Lightning Strike, 4 Discovery Dispersal, 2 Beacon Bolt, 2 Enigma Drake, 3 Sahili Sublime Artificer, 4 Crackling Drake, 6 Islands, 5 Mountains, 1 Watery Grave, 4 Steam Vents, 4 Sulphur Falls, 1 Blood Crip. Now to touch on the board here, 2 Spell Pierce, 2 Disdainful Stroke, 2 Negate, 4 Lava Coil, 2 Fiery Cannonade, 1 Ral Is It Viceroy, and 2 Niv Mizzet Haroon. Now you might look at this list and go, wow, this seems really bad. I'm going to start off by saying, yes, this deck is a wee bit more aggressive than the original builds. We do not play dive downs. We sort of swap them out instead for things like Thud and to make room for things like Sahili. Now I will say, the Thud here, late game, is great when you can't attack or sometimes attacking main phase 2 Thudnum ends the game. Um, as you know if you've played this list before or if you've played against it the Enigma Drake and Crackling Drake can get very big very fast. So my idea for the strategy of this deck was instead of playing a reactive deck where you try to continually counter your opponent's stuff be more proactive with it and try to stuff the victory down their face. Uh, so Thud has been good. Uh, four Augur of Bolas. This card might seem a little weird. Uh, we did forego the Terramander for these. I will say that so far in my testing, Augur of Bolas has been pretty fantastic. Um, at two mana, it's kind of like an underpowered chart the course, but at the same time, it helps you thin your deck out. It finds you those high-powered spells that you want such as your Thud, your Chart the Course for draw, your Discovery Dispersal for draw, your Beacon Bolt for removal. I don't feel like this card has anti-synergies, and I feel like this deck doesn't necessarily need a turn one play. Uh, yes, you can make your Terramander get bigger, but I just feel like the Agra Bolas helps with your consistency, because normally once this deck run out, runs out of hand, you just sort of get run over. Um... The three Sahili Sublime Artificer. In this deck, that ability is ridiculous. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one servo artifact creature. You have so many cheap spells in this deck that the Sahili can just allow you to go wide. Um, so far in testing, this has been fantastic as an effect for us. Now for the important thing, that minus two. Target artifact you control, presumably the servo token becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control until the end of the turn. So being able to cast a, let's say an opt, at the end of an opponent's turn to make a 1-1 servo token, then you already have a 8-4 Enigma Drake out. Next turn, use your Sahili, turn that servo token into another Enigma Drake. Now you're banging in for 16 points of damage instead of 9. She closes the clock up. She also gives you really solid thud targets as well. B 
being able to just lose a token and in response get another token back is fantastic. Uh, and again, you have the little army in a can. Throw your op, throw your shock, throw a chart the course just to try to get the board mucked up with 1-1s one -ones is a good feeling. Um, she works well in this deck. 3 might be a little much. I think I might tone it down to 2 just because this deck already has enough raw power behind it. Um, so far with the testing in 3, I've never felt like they've clumped up on me. I never felt like, oh man, if this was any other card right now, I'd be happy. And something else to remember is too in this build, we're trying to be a more aggressive, is it strike list? We throw caution to the wind. We're not going to protect ourselves. We just want to beat you down. Now for some discussions on the sideboard here. Uh, two spell pierce. These could potentially be moved to the main. I thought about it. I couldn't pull the trigger. I wanted to. Uh, two disdainful stroke. Normal. Two negate. Normal. Four lava coil. Very good versus the mirror. Very good versus the Sultai midrange list. I do like lava coils, but I felt in this build they're not necessary game one. Thanks to hopefully your surprise thuds. Uh, two fiery cannonade, just to kind of help keep the board clean. Uh, I like the fact, too, that it's also at instant speed. Um, of course, it doesn't really work well with Sahili because you're probably going to blow out all your 1 1s, but, you know, that's the trade you make. Uh, Ral, is it Viceroy? Probably one of my favorite planeswalkers currently in standard. Um, the plus 1 to sculpture draws is great. The minus 3 is removal is fantastic. The minus 8, normally just a pipe dream, doesn't happen too often. And two, Niv-Mizzet, sort of the honorary Drake in most of these lists. Um, I wanted to bring my curve down and be able to play more of a Sahili game, game one. Um, though these can easily be boarded in, it, boarded in against most matchups. Uh, so it's sort of a, you know, results may vary kind of card. Some people might want this in the main, some people might want it in the board. It's up to you changes I would make to this list. Um, one of the cards I was looking at playing, and I did not, is Ral's Outburst. Now initially, I was going to play two of these instead of the Sahili. I went with the Sahili instead. Now, I know what you're thinking. Four mana to do three damage. That's terrible. You're right, it's really not that good. But the other effect on it that is irrelevant is Put a card in your hand from the top of your library, the other into the graveyard. So being able to increase the damage on your Enigma Drake, on your Crackling Drake, it gives you reach. I mean, yes, it is four for three damage, but it could very well become four for four damage because you're going to grow your Drake. You're going to grow them, and that's great. Um... If you don't like the idea of Thud and you can't commit, I would throw those in the board. Swap those out with Spell Pierces, but I think you want the Thuds somewhere right now in the 75. Sometimes you do get these very gummed up, locked boards where you can't do anything, so sometimes just flinging is a good way to end the game. Um, you could also cut the Augur of Boluses out um, for the Terramanders. Um, I think the Augur of Boluses are worth trying. It does give the deck a little more consistency. I don't feel like this deck necessarily needed a turn one threat, uh, but it can be okay. It has its moments where um, late game, it's essentially two mana for a 5-5 flyer, which is fantastic. But I didn't want to have uh, the ability to kind of stumble on hitting our pieces. And since Augur of Bolas helps us find things like chart the course to keep our hands full or discovery to sculpt our draws, also helps us find removal and things like Beacon Bolt, uh, I definitely feel like Augur Bolas so far has earned the spot in this in the 60. Um, in the sideboard, potential changes I would make. Um, you could cut the Rao altogether. Um, I do think for certain matchups with the Sahili because of how strong she is. You could maybe cut the Niv Mizzets in the in the in the Ral, and go with the uh, Legion War Boss, uh, being able to essentially go game two into a completely balls to the wall token strategy, very strong. The fact that this has Mentor also good, also having a Servo token, copy a Legion War Boss, it's just going to make your army that much stronger. Um, 
I didn't go that route. I like more of a grindy game, uh, games two and three, uh, more so than going super aggressive. But you can definitely turn the tide by pulling out some of these sideboard cards. Uh, and also, maybe you don't have to go for Lava Coil. Um, that was just sort of a dealer's choice, and I was like, well, I love Lava Coil, so I'm playing four. Uh, and with that said, that is the spiciness of our updated Is It's Drake list. Again, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the deck. Comment down below if there's stuff to this deck you would change. And subscribe to the channel for more MTG content. Now that our new set's out, uh, there's going to be a pretty big influx of MTG Arena content coming out for a while. Uh, so with that said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one.